and I'm having a really good hair day. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. This is Programmer Mitch uh, coming at you with a another algorithms and data structures problem. Today, we're going to be talking about leak code 766, so a relatively recent one, called the Toplitz matrix, which I had not heard of before uh, doing this problem. A matrix is toplets if every diagonal from top left to bottom right has the same element. Now given m by n matrix, uh, m rows, n columns, return true if and only if the matrix is toplets. So let's pull in this matrix and kind of show. So we have three rows and it's easier to kind of like look at it this way. In the above grid the diagonals are 9, so this is 9 is one, then five, hey Paul Sandy, thanks for stopping in today. Five, five, then one, one, one here, two, 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 three, three, and then four is its own uh, diagonal. Uh, and this one, one, two, 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 uh, diagonal one, two has different elements, so we, we don't do this. So that's, those are some examples. You probably want to think, oh, well, you know, this is an M by N matrix, so it means it's a rectangular matrix. Could be square, it doesn't have to be. It's not something called a skew matrix where we have uh, different numbers of elements, like different numbers of columns like this. Um, that, that generally makes problems a little bit trickier. You don't often see that in data structure algorithms problems. Um, so uh, the note, the matrix will be a 2D array of integers. The matrix will have a number of rows and columns in the range of one to 20, and uh, cells in the matrix will be integers in the range of zero to 99. These are like good questions to ask to kind of like clarify in an interview setting if you're interested. Um, yeah, so let's hop right into an approach. Without touching the code first, we want to think, okay, well, it'd be good to walk over all the rows and all the columns. And for any given element, what are we thinking about? What, 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 what's important? Hey, Eli, uh, thanks for stopping in today. So. What would cause us to return false? Well, something these are like these type of diagonals, um, top left to bottom right. We're not doing uh, top right to bottom left, which is actually how I originally read the the, issue, the problem, and that makes it a little bit more difficult in that that's not the problem that they're asking. Uh, something that would cause this to be false is if this five were say a, a four, right? Then this um, diagonal is not entirely at the same number, and Let's say if this three was 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 not this one, but so we have to think about this. Okay, so that's the case. But what about the top row? Well, there's and under no situation would we would we um, disqualify the top row, right? Because we're that's kind of like establishing the trend. So this three, two, three, four, five, one. Once we get to this one, this one's not the same as three. Then we return false. We wouldn't return that at at this point. So basically, yeah, we just walk through it. Um, there's a nested for loop between rows and calls. We have to say that the row is greater than zero and the call is greater than zero. And then we just make a comparison. If we're at a, where the row is greater than zero and the call is greater than zero, we can just say, okay, where we're currently looking at is it the same as the thing in the row minus one and the call minus one. Hey, Lavender JMK, thanks for stopping in today. And if it's not, then we return false. So anytime we, we, that we're not... Um, in the first row, first call, we want to say, can we look over here above it? And if it's not the case, um, then we want to turn false, and then we return true. So let's go ahead and code that out. This should be a short episode, uh, but you know, it doesn't mean it's a bad episode. So we, so we say for and range of length of matrix, and actually I'm going to keep this up. And I'll delete that in a second. For row in range of length of matrix, and for call in range of length of matrix of zero. So in a rectangular uh, 2D array matrix, uh, 2D list, you might say in Python, this is the the, the format. Uh, for row in range, range of length of matrix, for call in range of length of matrix of zero. Um, then we're going to say if row is greater than zero and call is greater than zero, uh, and and we want to say and the um, where we're currently looking matrix of row call is not equivalent to the matrix of 
the top left corner, or not top left corner, but the top left cell, matrix of row minus one and call minus one. Then we just say return false. And otherwise we want to return true. So let's comment out this and go ahead and submit the solution. And hopefully that is a quick pass. Lee code is really thinking about it. Really thinking about it. Did I log in? Oh, good. And we're finally accepted. So we walk in through each row. We walk through each call dot down the line, and we say if the row is greater than zero, the call is greater than zero, and the matrix, the row call does not equal the matrix of row minus one, the call minus one. Return false, otherwise return true. This was a quick, real quick one. Let's go ahead and do this one in JavaScript. Some people have been asking for a little JavaScript. Let's give it to them. So is Toplix matrix? Uh, so what we say? So we say um, for let i equal zero, i uh, less than. Maybe I should have practiced this be beforehand, but we're doing it live. I less than matrix dot length and I plus plus, and we wrap that in for let J equals zero. J is less than matrix of zero dot length J plus plus. And then we just say if row, which case we call I here, I is less than, I'm not sure why you call it I. I is, I is greater than zero and, so and is double ampersand in JavaScript as opposed to just the, the, the word and in Python. If I is greater than zero and J is greater than zero and matrix of I, J does not equal matrix of I minus one, J minus one, then we return false, not capitalized in JavaScript. And you JavaScript junkies, you have to wrap your conditionals in parentheses in JavaScript. You don't have to do um, like this on a one line in JavaScript. You can you can uh, you do not need the curly braces. You can just say return false, and otherwise we return true. Also not capitalized in JavaScript. Cool. So let's give that a spin. That looks to be good. And let's see if that makes that works, make sure that works in JavaScript as well. Runtime error. Unexpected identifier on line nine. Hmm, did it not like this? If I is greater than zero and J is greater than zero and oh jeez. I'm I'm getting confused. Double ampersand. And matrix of I J does not equal and also if we're in in uh, JavaScript uh, bang equals equals is uh, type checking uh, as opposed to just this not equals does, doesn't have a type check. So you might as well use that. Let's try that again once more into the breach. Good, and we're accepted. So we walk through each row, through each column. Um, if we're greater than uh, the, the first row and the first column, zero indexed. Uh, if the where we're currently looking at is not uh, the top left, we're going to return false, and then we're going to return true. We did leak code 766, Toplitz, the Toplitz matrix in both Python and JavaScript. It's a leak code easy. It's a little bit of a newer one, so I thought of doing uh, something a little bit newer. Um, it's time complexity. We walk through every element, so it's m by n. Its space complexity is constant. It's not uh, it's not linear. We don't keep uh, we don't make another matrix. Um, so this is a pretty nice solution for us there. And this, that is it for me, Programmer Mitch. This was, uh, once again, LeetCode 76, the Toplitz Matrix. Hope to see you next week at 5.30 p.m. Uh, for another data structures and algorithms uh, problem in Python, but maybe we'll, we'll do a little JavaScript as well if we have a little bit of free time. See you then.